Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't even know where to begin. Look at the packaging on this. You have not heard about this? I don't think so. I hadn't heard about it until it was offered directly from Kingwear, the KW06. What's in this box? Well, I can kind of show you. This is a, a description from GearBest. I don't have a link for you, at least not at this point, to purchase this from anywhere. It's a holding point uh, at GearBest because they're getting ready, but it's not, it's not out yet. The uh, Square KW06 Android smartwatch, uh, it, it's a 5.1 Android, uh, half a gigabyte RAM, uh, eight gigabytes of total storage. It does all of the standard wireless stuff for 3G. It's got a uh, 320 by 320 display, which is really good and a small little side camera on it. It has a SIM card slot, so standalone connectivity, and of course all of the different uh, normal viewing things, supporting all these different languages and all these additional features. Um, let's take a look at it. This is really something. Okay, here we go. Inside the box, wrapped up, all pretty. Now, Kingwear, we know Kingwear, the KW line, the KW88, and 98, and 99, all those beautiful round watches. Now they're coming out with this square, rectangular watch with, uh, wow, looks like really nice build quality. Let's take that off. This looks like a cover for the SIM card, a microphone. On this side, we've got two nicely recessed rectangular buttons and a camera. Stiff bands. Looks like screws here, but I wouldn't trust that they're removable. They look like they're in there. Yeah, you can see the cutout for the antennas. So non-removable bands on this one. Heart rate. Um, there's the charging connector port. And this whole back is kind of rubberized. Look at that. Very interesting design on this watch. Let's see what else we have inside the container. Well, we've got a screwdriver, no doubt, for removing the screws to put in the SIM card. We've got the standard charging cable with the four pins. Oh, look at this one. It's got alignment pins as well. That's something different. Hmm. We'll have to try one of the generic ones and see if it works. But this one, yes, indeed. Look, it's got alignment pins here, too. Does that mean it's magnetic? Yeah, it's magnetic. I don't know if it would hold the watch. Yeah, I guess it would. It's pretty strong. Okay. But it has alignment pins. That's a new creation. Make sure that it's in there in the right, in the right spot. And then we have a user's manual. Wow, and a thick one at that. Oh, and they, they throw in a screen protector, too, if you want to put that on your watch. I'm not a big fan of those because I never have had trouble with the glass on these. But if those of you want to try it, you come with the screen protector. The manual. All right. Let's take a look through it. You can freeze frame it and read it on your leisure. Have some notes and a product overview with pictures. Basic operation. You hold down the button to turn it on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, kind of technical, huh? That's how you get into the different menus. The different uh, dial faces that you see on this one. Synchronizing the software. And they want you to scan the QR code or look for Y-Watch, W-I-I Watch. That's the standard Android tethering watch for these phones. Nothing special about that one, unfortunately. We're hoping there'll be some improvements to it over time. Yeah, 
And. Uh -huh. Wow. It's so funny. Sometimes the manual just doesn't tell you anything. And then you get these little books with color pictures. Lots of detail. Well, at least I can rest assured if I overlook something when I do the uh, full review, you guys are going to be able to read about it in here. My goodness, okay. A Bluetooth phone call. When the phone and watch are connected via Bluetooth, the Bluetooth phone call contact and synchronized phone records can be realized. Hmm. Well, we're going to definitely see how well this supports uh, Bluetooth phone calling. Remote capturing, health, health reminders. Uh-huh. And we wonder why these reviews turn out to be a half hour, 40 minutes up to an hour long, huh? I don't know anywhere else you get a chance to see these manuals. They're not on PDF or anywhere else available, so you get it all. You can always skip through them, I guess. A warranty card, and then it looks like we jump into, yes, the Chinese version of it printed on the other side. Okay, very interesting. The KW06 new square watch from Kingware. Let's uh, charge it up and turn it on. Well, this one operates a bit differently than others and similar to others. Uh, I've already run through the paces with this. Charged it up, checked it out, put in some uh, watch faces. Yes, it takes custom and some apps and we're ready to explore it. Now, as an Android watch, it definitely has a lot of different capabilities. It's got Wi-Fi and GPS and it's got um, cellular connectivity capability to it. It's a relatively quick boot. It's almost done. And there you go. It's on one of its square watch faces. Now, this is going to be fun because on a square watch, we have edge-to-edge -edge capability, not just around. So all these corners you're seeing filled in here are available to be used for watch faces. So first, I'd like to just give you a quick peek at some of the watch faces that they're using. This is kind of a dim one, but I have display brightness installed, so I can brighten it up for you to take a look. That's an interesting face. Come over here, and we have this one. I'm coming back to that one. Here's another one. Uh, again, they filled in the corners to make it look really nice on a square watch. Won't go through all of them, just a few of them to show you some of the benefits. And brighten that one up. Okay. That's nice. You see how they've got the, uh, the screen display fully utilized. There is also, uh, in case you didn't know, one of those Square um, Google G Plus communities out there, Square Watch ones, where the folks actually focus on designing and uh, talking about Square Watch faces. And it's pretty cool. There's some really nifty designs there. Here's another square one. Okay, toward the end, we can come back and play more with these. But I did want to come back and show you this one. Because those of you who are yawning, watch this. You see everything there. And we have been used to seeing things like heart rate and step count. But we have active buttons here. If I press that button, I can go into the phone dialer. That's right. If I press that one, I can go into messaging. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that built into the watch engine? Me either. But it's here now, at least in this one watch face. We tap that one and it goes in and gets ready to do your heart rate and actually goes into that mode. All in that one watch face. Now, none of the others do that, but that's pretty cool. Okay, let's cover the layout of the watch. When you scroll down, you get your typical informational pages that come with Android watches, your silent or noisy mode, your twist your wrist to see the time, airplane, cellular data, and location services, brightness of your screen, Bluetooth on and off, and Wi-Fi on and off, and your step count. So those are the things that display across the top. 
Here's your watch face. If you scroll up, you're going to go into your weather for your location, and it's the standard weather in centigrade. If you go to the right, you see your notifications tethered to your phone as pushed to you through that Y Watch uh, app, W I I. And if you go this way, we're into all of your apps. Now, a couple of things to tell you about this. This is fun. They're different, first of all. Look at this. They've got different kind of icons in here. And look at that. The third thing down is Bluetooth calling. Going to come back to that one. Messaging and settings. And I want to take you into settings for a second. I'm jumping around here. But I want to go back to the app list style and go to matrix. You ready? Wow. Okay. Like the old Windows phone, right? You've got all your stuff now showing up in these different sizes uh, squares on the screen. That is a different way now of displaying all of your icons. And there's a bunch of them. Now, when you get down in here, these are ones that I've put in. They've been modified to fit in the squares, given little kind of icons. And there they are, the AIDA64, the N22 benchmark, all of that stuff is there all in that app layout design. So that's something really different that we haven't seen. Let's go back in here and make it back into lists so we can actually go through them one by one. Your contacts are going to be um, the ones that you know you have for your regular SIM card. And I believe when you log into Google, it can import your Google contacts as well. Phone is related to placing a call through the SIM card. And if you have the SIM installed, that's how it'll work. But it says no SIM installed, right? But the Bluetooth calling, that's the one where if you're tethered to your uh, phone, you'll be able to dial a phone call directly from the dial pad, switch over to call history if you've made previous calls, synchronize that, You've got your phone book of all of your contacts and you have your overall settings and you can scan when you're all tethered to get all that stuff. Now, tethering, by the way, with the Bluetooth is, is just tethering to the phone. You don't really need to use the app. You use the standard tethering like if you were tethering your uh, headphones, your Bluetooth headphones. Messaging is, of course, uh, tied to your SIM card. We don't have Bluetooth messaging directly yet that's going to be coming but right now your sms is coming that way and then settings we were in here you have sound uh your display your overall display brightness and sleep time and all of those things are standard your connections for wi-fi bluetooth wi-fi hotspots available in your airplane mode cellular gps all those happen in there the gesture of twisting your wrist to uh, see the time or turning on and off the pedometer goes in there. You've got your language and input, your date and time, uh, where you can set all of that stuff up, reset, uninstall, and overall about the watch, which some of you may be interested in. KW06, Android 5.1. The kernel version is Tuesday, January the 9th, 2018. And that's... We're starting to see these watches that have this kernel version showing up in 2018 starting to appear with the Bluetooth calling. So it's good to see that that's happening. Then we've got a basic browser, your calendar, the uh, alarm clock stuff, your camera on the side. Let's grab our picture over here. And it's, it's not a high resolution camera but it is a camera and I always have trouble getting it. I want to tilt it the wrong way there. I got to go that way. Okay. Did it take a picture? There it did. Okay. Now we've got that picture there. We always try to go through this testing as to how do you expand a picture? Do you double tap? No, oh, that brings up information. Do you triple tap? No. Do you pinch and zoom? Uh-oh. Come back here. It's like two fingers twisting. No. 
Wow. Well, it looks like on the implementation of the camera here, we don't have any way of expanding the image. Oh, there we did. Well, the triple tap, you see the square around it? That's a system thing that we implement using um, a systems app. Um, we'll get to that. Um, that's a magnification that's not related to having the camera. It, it does that for all the screens when you do that triple tap. So far as I can tell, there's no way to expand it. You can get in here and edit it, rotate it, crop it, do all sorts of things with it. But you don't. doesn't look like you can make it bigger on this watch. All right, that's unfortunate. Gallery, of course, is where you'd see that picture and any other pictures you've got. I got lots of watch faces in here, so we're seeing images from watch faces show up in the gallery. Your music player, basic sound recorder. We can test that. This is a recording test, testing one, two, three. Say done, say save. It's been saved. And recording list. There it is. Oh, wow. I can barely hear that. Wow. That is super low. That is so low. It makes me wonder if in the settings, in the sound, we have these turned up all the way. Yeah. They're up, but wow, not very bright at all. Even just playing it there, even though the speaker's up here. That's unfortunate. Well, okay. That's the sound recorder. And the file manager. This is where we see how much memory we have available. With this uh, being an 8 gigabyte watch, I believe, we have... You add those two together and that's how much it comes with. I've put in some apps and, and watch faces, which is why the available is low, lower than normal, because uh, all that yellow part's occupied with the stuff I've put in. Your overall weather. There's voice search for Google, the Play Store. Your Google Maps. Uh huh. Here's where you connect the phone using Bluetooth. And now you're getting into um, display brightness, the one that I added. Here's your uh, overall reminders for all these different things. And uh, your health section, where you can do a timed pedometer or activate your heart rate. You've got a remote capture when you're tethered, music control remote and find my device. All that, including switching platforms, relates to the WII Watch uh, app. And now you get into all of my installed testing apps. And we will run through those. Uh, first of all, just to show you what's inside the watch. Oh, we'll get to that in the AIDA. This is this is where I wanted to show you the um, accessibility with setting search. When you go in here and you come to the magnification gestures and you turn that on, that gives you the ability to triple tap, hold your finger on it, and slide around. And you need that app or something similar to it, setting search, in order to access accessibility because it's normally not available to you through the standard operating system. You with me? Okay. ADA64 gives us a quick look at what we have on board here. This is the uh, system information. Shows you your installed memory as well. And here's the processor information. and your display, 320 by 320. Okay. Then when we run the Antutu benchmark report, and I've already run it, uh, so we'll tell you the results, 14,967, about 15,000. Typical, when you have a watch that doesn't even have one um, gigabyte of, uh, of RAM, uh, when you have a half a gigabyte, you have really limited capability. You'd love to see more RAM on this, um, but it's got some, and it's got uh, enough uh, operational memory, apparently, to be able to do some stuff. Now, pushing the bottom button, there we go, gets it back. Then the engineering mode MTK. Now, when I worked with this, this is where we're going to go over here to location, and we're going to go into GPS, 
and we're going to turn on the GPS. We have to activate the mode, make it uh, high, high accuracy. It's on, and then we touch that for the satellites. Now, when I tried this last night, when I was checking this out, usually you have to go outside, you know, in order to get the satellites. And it was a long time before they started to show up, but it was raining outside. It's raining again right now. And thank goodness that I waited because you saw that one green one flash there. You see them all turning green? Indoors, where most of the time when I bring the watches back inside, the green disappears and goes red. In this case, this watch is locking them in green. Now, if I have it on, does it stay green? It does. So far. So, this right now has got the best GPS of any watch I've tested. Never had one that would actually do this. Lock and load inside and stay green. So, that's fairly encouraging that we've got really solid GPS. If you're going to use this for doing any kind of GPS location type work. And then an overall speed test. I don't have a SIM in here. But I do have it, of course, connected to the Wi-Fi network so we can get a feel for how the uh, Wi-Fi is performing, at least. It goes out. It pings the network. That means sends a signal out. And how long does it take to come back? 12 milliseconds. And it's running its uh, overall speed test on a network where I have about 50 gigabytes um, speed. And right now it's coming in at about 29. Last night it came in about 45. So it does a, a decent job. They always use, uh, come in around 10 to 12 on the upload end of it. Uh, so speed test works out really well too. So overall, in terms of like a quick look at this watch, push all these different buttons to get back, <clears throat> we've got from Kingwear a brand new square rectangular Android watch with good capabilities a little soft on the audio, a little light on the memory. Bluetooth calling is capable on it, as well as SIM carding so calling. You install the SIM here. And um, yeah, it's got some creative new watch faces. And just to show you, if I scroll way down here, these are my own installed watch faces, custom watch faces. Ah, and when you get to the very end, of the list. You see you've got those uh, ones with the little arrows on them. Those are the watch faces that I've downloaded from their server by hitting that plus sign. So you have all that capability as well. Really nice little watch. It's using the standard process for installing watch faces um, that we're used to on the now I'd say it was on the Kingwear KW88 new new technique. Well, it's the same technique now on the KW06. So check it out. This looks like it's a good watch. Where are you going to get it? I really don't know. I can show you a picture. <laughs> if I get some buying links, of course, I will put them in the show notes and I'll try to get you a good discount. Hopefully, uh, you'll get in on the early flash sales when they become available too. This is the only picture I could find, really, uh, from Gearbest. But again, it's out of stock right now. But keep an eye out, and hopefully you'll pick one up if you're interested. It's a solid build. As far as square watches go, yeah, I'm impressed. Nice watch. All right, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks, and thank you for your subscription. We'll see you again soon.